来有陈粉的信心，才乎一切艰难困苦，将我国建设成为一个伟大的社会主义共和国。The 100 Flowers Campaign of 1956 was a policy initiative designed by Chairman Mao of the Chinese Communist Party to promote Western ideals of intellectual freedom and individual expression of thought. The campaign, superficially designed as a policy measure to expose the party to public scrutiny and discourse, ultimately would enable free thought to benefit the state's political institutions and Chinese culture. The first stage of Mao's plan was a success. Letters and protests condemning the Communist Party flowed through to the highest ranks. Mao had effectively opened an honest and uninhibited line of communication between dissidents and the state. All seemed well. For the first time in a long period, the urban-dwelling, intellectually sound bourgeoisie had their opinions heard. But things all quickly took a dark turn. For these citizens did not realize that Mao had laid down a vicious trap. The Hundred Flowers movement was not designed to enable freedom of expression, but the opposite. It was constructed as a facade with the true purpose to weed out and condemn anyone exhibiting counter-revolutionary behavior. Within a year of the policy's implementation, Mao began measures to imprison, re-educate, publicly humiliate, and execute counter-revolutionaries, all who had fallen for the falsity of free speech. In the eyes of Mao, the weeds had been sorted from the flowers. So exactly why did Mao employ such a cataclysmic endeavor to persecute his own people and suppress any semblance of intellectual freedom? A few reasons arise. Firstly, his innate disdain for the bourgeoisie was enduring. Right from his very conception to his succession of power, Mao was a man of the proletariat and a fervent believer in the peasant revolution. His initial policies and power highlight this objective. The movement also demonstrates an attempt to consolidate power and create a united communist front within China. Any dissidents would obstruct the socialist agenda and hinder the political and economic social revolution that was occurring under his watch. True to communist ideology, an inevitable class struggle was one of the last items Mao wanted on his plate. But perhaps what stands out most strongly, however, was Mao's fear of rejection as a socialist dictator. An ongoing effort was observed within the Soviet Union following the death of Stalin to rid itself of his influence or de-Stalinized, so to speak. Despotic dictatorship-style policy was now of the past. Mao feared a similar effort unfolding in China, consequently seeking to align his own values and cult-like personality with the very definition of China itself. Mao in China had to become synonymous, to manifest an undisputed eternal legacy amongst a rich Chinese culture and history. Scholarly opinion ranges regarding the rationale behind the Hundred Flowers campaign as a whole. Was it the overwhelming condemnation expressed by the artists of China that was all too much for Mao to handle, accordingly requiring him to evolve his Hundred Flowers movement towards persecution? Or, more likely, was the campaign a meticulously and sadistically crafted plan to execute order? The groundwork was now laid to launch the country into the Great Leap Forward, with the denouncement of outspoken individuals just one step on a path towards glory. Mao was a clever tactitioner after all, and brutal, tyrannical rule was the hallmark of his leadership. What we're left with of the Hundred Flowers campaign of Mao in 1956 is a disputed rationale that will undoubtedly remain contestable and multifaceted. The movement itself, executed by Mao, stands out as one of the most successful and extensive acts of deception in human history. With respect to the Hundred Flowers movement, whatever your beliefs you have formed regarding its implementation or legacy, how it overly affected China, 
one message stands out above all. To never trust a tyrant.